three, two, one. Good day to every one of you. We are the connoisseurs of group number two. I am Regina Santos, their group leader, and we are here to present the five Filipino artists in the fields of literature, architecture, and visual arts. Sit back and relax as we tell you our group's analysis, art analysis, and interpretation of the different art pieces created by the artists we highlighted for this activity. Now, may we call on Ms. Orion Ranyada and Ms. Lorraine Coromeng to discuss the first artists and their artwork in the field of visual arts. Thank you, Ms. Regina. Presenting the defense of a Filipino woman's honor painted by Fernando C. Amorsolo, who is titled The Grand Old Man of Philippine Art. He is awarded as part of the National Artist of the Philippines. Four days after his death, Amorsolo focuses on portraits and landscapes by using oil canvas as his art medium. He shows in his arts what he sees in his eyes and experience as a Filipino. Based on the texture and style of his other artworks, such as the Bataan, the Lagang Bukid, Lavandera, Returning Home, and more are made with oil canvas and used to portrait and landscapes as his primary subject. Similarly, to the defense of the Filipino woman's honor, he created this art using oil canvas as his medium and a portrait as his primary subject, but as we go deeper, its primary subject can also be a history since this was inspired and created after the World War II which started in the year 1991 that ended in the year 1945. Proceeding to the interpretation, since this was created after World War II, Amor Solo was trying to show the masculinity and the respect of the Filipino man for women and how powerless women are during those years. As from the title itself, the world defense the word defense was shown in this art. It shows how the man trying to protect the woman from someone since the man is ho holding a machete. The man's body structure and facial expression seems to be a father, a spouse, or a brother concerning the woman in the artwork. The man in the artwork represents every Filipino man who holds the responsibility of protecting their loved ones or their household. On the other hand, the woman in the artwork seems to be defenseless based on her posture and facial expression. Her half-naked situation represents those people who were tortured, raped, and pillaged during the World War II. Based on the report of the National Republic National Public Radio, over a thousand Filipino were called comfort women of the Japanese men during World War II. They, they used abduction, coercion, and deception to force women and even children to provide sexual gratification to military personnel. The women and the men are the main subjects of this artwork as it gives a glimpse of the situation of every Filipino during World War II, how the Filipino protect themselves and their loved ones, and how every woman was sexually harassed by the military man and become defenseless during those years to survive. Now, let me give the floor to Ms. Arian Renata. Thank you, Ms. Lorraine Coraming. So, Fernando Marsola's artwork demonstrates the use of a variety of forms in conjunction with one another. Upon closer examination, it can be seen that the walls are painted in soft geometric square shapes that there is a cylindrical candle holder, and that there is a cross on the altar, and the bed is covered with a cloth. Organic forms were used to create the composition of the picture. Thus, it can be seen how the artist has included many elements of art in his work. Shape and form were particularly prominent in this piece, which was intended to produce a realistic-looking painting by employing organic forms to show both a man and a woman. Color and value are also present in this painting, where he employed them them to create smooth contour lines on the man's shoulders and brows to give him the appearance of being alert and focused. It can also be noticed that the woman was painted with a lighter skin tone. Through interaction between these elements of art, the subjects in the picture were well developed with distinct features and clear facial expressions that allowed viewers to grasp their emotions. Several artistic methods that are typical to this genre are used in the painting, including the use of light and shadow, the location of the subject, and the variety of other techniques that have been used to give the sense of perspective and depth. On the other side, when it comes to design and principles, 
principles, you can observe that the most obvious concept is emphasis, where the painter used a brighter palette of colors to paint the man and the woman, but the painter chose darker colors to paint the backdrop, as we can see in the image. He also employed unity in his artwork to allow these aspects to complement one another, as well as the potential to engage in a dynamic dialogue with its viewers, which aids viewers to recognizing the message the painter needs to send to his audience. Artwork that not only looks beautiful, but also captures the feelings of Filipinos and that historical period has a lasting impact on us. Consequently, we are able to grasp the artwork's intended message because of its ability to communicate with us. A wide range of factors must be take, taken into consideration while evaluating a piece of art. These are some of the questions that prompted us to go further in our evaluation of the piece. To begin, it's critical to evaluate the artist's level of technical proficiency. What's the quality of the artist's work? How well do they work with their technique? The originality of the work should also be taken into account. Is it bringing anything fresh to the table? Is this a new take on an old idea? Is this artwork plainly derived from another piece? And if so, does it bring anything unique to the original work if it is? Finally, think about how the artwork makes you feel. What kind of feeling do you get from it? Are you enraged or saddened by this? Is this intensity of feelings in keeping with the topic matter? Because if they weren't, why would they be there? With this aid of these questions, we were able to gauge not only the quality of the work itself, but also the degree of talent and originality shown by the author. To that end, for uh, Fernando Amarzola, let me give the floor to Mr. Dian Polinar for the next presentation. Thank you, Lorraine, and thank you, Arian, for introducing to us Fernando Amorsolo and his wonderful work. Now, let us move on to another to another field of art, which is literature. So, um, in front of you is the cover page of the famous short story titled The Bread of Salt. This short story was written by none other than Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez, or more famously known as NBM Gonzalez. Gonzalez, as we, know, as we all know, is one of the Philippine National Artists for Literature awarded in, in year 1997. He is known as a fictionist, essayist, poet, poet, and teacher, and is said to have articulated the Filipino spirit in rural and urban landscapes, which is highly palpable in this short story that we are going to introduce to you today. Among many recognitions he received during his lifetime, he won the first Commonwealth Literacy Contest in 1940. He also received the Republic Cultural Heritage Award in 1960 and the Gawad CCP Para Sa Sining in 1990. The awards attest to his triumph in appropriating the English language to express, reflect, and shape Philippine culture and Philippine sensibility. He became the University of the Philippines international writer in residence and a member of the board of advisors of the UP Creative Writing Center. In 1987, Gonzalez was conferred the Doctor of Human Letters or Honoris Cosa. It is considered as the highest academic recognition in the country. However, the best artifacts that can prove his greatness in writing is his works. And one of those is this short story, which is titled Bread of Salt. Gonzalez wrote this, sh this short story in 1958 and written it in the first-person point of view. It tells a story of a simple 14-year-old boy who is infatuated with the, nie with the niece of a rich plantation owner, and as time went by, the boy further realized the gap between his fantasies and the realities of life. He soon found that the social divide between him and the girl, which is named Ida in the story, was wider than he initially thought. The story was also published in 1993 with a book titled The Bread of Salt and Other Stories. Now let us hear from Mr. Henry the analysis of this short story. Thank you, Mr. Dian. Now for the analysis of the short story, it is the story is about the life of a young boy that is juvenile. In the beginning, it narrates the routine of a 14-year-old boy that fetches bread 
of salt every morning for his family. Bread of salt is also known as pandesal. The only thing that pushed him to do this routine every day is to see the old Spanish house in which the girl he admired lived there. The name of the girl is Aida, a niece of the old Spaniard. At first, the boy thought that he would spend his life serving the old Spaniard family because of his grandfather. However, he continued to pursue his career career as a violinist because he wanted to impress Ida and buy her a brooch as a present of confession. confession. One day, an opportunity came and a trombone player named Pete Saez was invited to perform with the young boy at a grand surprise party in the old Spanish house. The main character went to the party early and endured eating food until the party ended. Still and old, he, he, he was starving, which led him to grab the delightful foods and he was not able to endure his, his starvation anymore. He even put some egg yolk in his, pa- in his pocket and the girl that he liked saw this disgraceful action. He felt ashamed and his ego was humiliated. After the party, the boy started to set away from his feelings for the girl. The story ended with the young boy leaving the party and wanting to buy bread of salt. In the review of the narrative, we can see the subject matter of the story. The Bread of Salt by Nestor Vicente Madali Gonzalez is a genuinely interesting story since a Philippine As Filipino, we can relate to the story. To understand it better, let us discuss the symbolism that was used in the story so we can identify the theme that it wants to bring. We all know that the title is The Bread of Salt, also known as Pandesal. The Pandesal was mentioned at the beginning and the ending of the story. There is a significant reason behind this. In the beginning, The pandesal was mentioned as a symbol of the social status of the young boy. Usually, we know that Filipinos in a lower sta- of a lower status love, love to eat pandesal because it is cheap and can satisfy our morning breakfast. Hence, the young boy belongs to a low status and it is proven as we discussed el- earlier in the subject matter of the story. Additionally, Aida, a niece of an old Spaniard, is eating a feast, whereas the family of a young boy can barely buy pandesal. With these contrasts, it is evidently proven that the, that the theme of the story is about the relationships between two different worlds of social status, where the poor were distant from rich people, and the people who are born into low-status families need to climb a steep steep step while the people while the people who are born rich are who, who are the people who are born rich are in comfort and enjoyed what they have the young boy at the end of the story realizes the gap between his life and Ida in the end his love for her can never reach and he decided to put an end to it there are still many things in life that he must learn and he realized the and he realized before he can stand beside the life of Aida. The story ended with the boy longing for Pandesal, which reminded us of the low status of his life and how unfair the world is where he can't even stand beside the girl he likes. Thank you, Henry, for that analysis. Now let us try to interpret the elements or the story itself. How was the story constructed? As we all know, NBM Gonzalez is um, famous or popular for his authentic vocabulary and the use of idiomatic expressions. If you were to read this piece, The Bread of Salt, the message he is trying to express or communicate can be easily extracted if, number one, you have a wide vocabulary, and number two, you are familiar with the idiomatic expressions that he used. So, actually, I have read this in junior high, and my interpretation back then was not as deep 
or as wide compared to now when I read it again. He's trying to tell us um, many messages through the perspective of the young boy. The most that most of us are like the persona. Number one, it is human nature to desire things that we do not have. There were times that we would try to make our own reality. We would create a world of fantasies as we are tired or dissatisfied with our daily lives. We can see this in the story in the part where the boy tried to imagine that through his violin skills, he would travel the world and have a music tour around the world's music centers and that he would be able to play in front of a millionaire in New York and that the girl he has been yearning for, Miss Ida or Ida, would be watching him clapping and shouting bravo. Something that is just created out of his fantasies and something very different from the reality he is living in. Gonzalez began the story in a way that um, he showed us as if the boy's life and the girl's li- and the girl Ida's life are not much different. Then he went to show us how extravagant the life of the girl is and the contrast between her life and the boy's life. So, um, NBM Gonzalez started this story um, in the lens of the boy. Then he then progressed the story and showed us that the boy's life and the girl's life are really two different worlds. So, ayun nga, the story started with the boy buying pandesal because NBM Gonzalez used pandesal as a symbolism in the story. So, the story started with the boy buying a pandesal and the number of pandesal he brought is already distributed evenly for their family. Then, at the near end of the story, as mentioned by Mr. Glodo a while ago, he got to eat egg nest, which is yung, um, yung egg yolk with honey and peppermint in the party in Ida's house, which he considered luxurious and only for the rich. So that's the contrast between him and Ida. Ida can, um, can afford to eat that expensive um, delicacy while he can only eat pandesal. So the story even got to the point where the girl witnessed how beggarly the young boy is through covetousness as he ate and packed so much food for himself, which was mentioned a while ago by Mr. Glodo. That part of the story will make the readers feel embarrassed for the boy as that situation slapped him the truth that the grounds they are standing on are not the same. In conclusion, there is one message the writer is trying to convey to us, the readers, that we must always hope for better things. However, there are stars that are extremely far and beyond our reach. And we must accept that we cannot reach them at least today or the next day or in the next few years. And every time I see this piece, The Bread of Salt, I'm always reminded and saddened that the world we are living in is indeed unfair. Some are born with a golden spoon in their mouths, and some can only afford the bread of salt or pandesal to appease their mouths. Thank you, Dian. As we end our critic in the art, uh, let us move on to the judgment. We wanted to express that we enjoyed really enjoyed and loved the literature that is made by NBM Gonzalez because it depicts many themes such as dreams where we can see in the story uh, that the young boy continued to pursue being a violinist despite his aunt is being is against it because the, his aunt warned him that there is no future in becoming a violinist. On the other hand, we also saw the admiration or in the story uh, uh, we can see the relationship and and how the young boy ad- really adores uh, the the girl he loves which which is named Aida oh, moreover we can also saw the uh, we also noticed the failure and hope in the story which is 
we saw, we saw that ano, we saw that the young boy failed to uh, realize at the end that he was not able to stand beside the girl Hela because thus the gap between their social status was too far and he was as Dian said earlier he was loved by a reality Be- uh, because where his to- social status was too far from the girl he want that he wanted and but there is still hope from from the young boy in the story because at the end he he continued his he continued to move on and try and he was able to forgot the girl he, that he loved and due to these themes we can say that they are connected to each other and it gives spice to the to the readers The, uh, that helps us to to really enjoy the story that we read, and these elements uh, made the short story more colorful. At the same time, uh, it did not uh, give us boredom as we read the story from the beginning up until the end. And moreover, uh, we can see in these points that we Filipinos, we Filipinos can relate since we also felt that there is a huge wall when it comes to the people with low status and those who are of high status. In reality, we can relate it because in our in the world that we live in, we also know that it we are also experiencing this kind of uh, dis- discrimination where or a gap rather gap because in we all know that in today's generation the the people who are born poor are experiencing hardship while the people in a higher status are in a comfortable life where they can do many things unlike the people who are, who are in the low status they have limited they are only limited in terms of their actions and their status in their lives But nevertheless, this we uh the, we like this how the story, the elements of the story and style combined combined together, especially uh of the especially the use of the authentic and vocabulary vocabulary authentic vocabulary and idioms of the risers that the end mentioned earlier. It challenged us the readers to expand our vocabulary. That helps us to dig deeper into the meaning of the story and know what is the real meaning behind this short story. We li- we believe that the artwork, because of this reason, we believe that the artwork is effective since it was a simple and entertaining story. Yet the theme and meaning behind the story were profound and gave a lot of real life lessons, even in our st- social status today. The morals that it gives, that it gave, can be applied to today's generation. And the great thing about this work is, it was able. It great thing about this work, it was able to use uh, the experiences, cultures, and traditions of the Filipinos in everyday lives. All in all, we were able to conclude this judgment with the help of the other criteria. We believe that all the criteria such as the description, analysis, and judgment are helpful in order to interpret and form the the art the clear image of the artwork because this these different criteria are are like puzzle pieces that needs to be connected to each other. So we can we were able so we can we were able to know the team and critic uh in a better way this artwork piece of artwork and that's all for our for our critic about the bread of salt to further explore of other filipino artworks here are jim well and eliza that will critic the painting artwork of cesar legaspi thank you mr glodo now let us talk about cesar legaspi's artwork as you can see The artwork in front of you is a painting titled Gadgets. The artist who painted this artwork was Cesar Torren de Legaspi, a Filipino national artist and an art director who practiced visual art in the late 1960s. He studied painting for a semester at the University of the Philippines of Fine Arts 
before settling for commercial art classes. Eventually, he received an award for using perspective and illustration projects. Cesar Nagas' piece, Painting, was published into a variation that depicts the growing importance of machines in the post-war industrialization period, as well as what he saw as a threat to humans. The painting was created in 1949 that illustrates an era when industrialization was both feared and consistently portrayed, showing the mutant fusion of man and machine, which are the primary subject in Cesar Legaspi's artwork. As we look through it, we can see that the artist used certain art medium such as oil paint, canvas, and paintbrush. He used common tools to express his ideas within the contemporary issue in the late 90s where machines were developing. For a better under understanding, sorry, the art analysis and interpretation will be tackled by Ms. Briones. For the art analysis, the subject matter and the theme of the artwork gadget show how machines ruled humanity in the late 1900s, which evolved from time to time. It portrays the industrialization, invention, and the progress of machines in our society that even humans are affected by it. When it comes to the elements of art, the form, space, shape, value, and texture of the artwork gadget perceive the quality of visual art where the painter describes his experience regarding the issue. Lastly, the principle of design that can be found in the art of Cesar Legaspi was cubism art. It illustrates the intellectual approach of, cubi of cubism art that gives way to more harmonic element. Now let's dig deeper about the painting. By giving you the art interpretation, it is evident that our society used several types of machines for improving the economy. They used it as a weapon for war, helping with people's jobs, etc. Cesar Lagaspi was able to express the industrialization of our country. In the painting, we will see that the machines or technologies are now taking over manpower and it will slowly destroy the jobs of many. Technologies are beneficial to our life, but it also has its disadvantages. This is the reality that as our society's technology continues to develop, people will also be affected. More than that, this painting made us think what will happen for our future if gadgets take over to train people and create chaos. Now, Mr. Quevedo will proceed explaining the judgment about this painting. Thank you, Ms. Briones. We're all aware that technology is essential to our lives since it is more effective for communication, easy to access, saves time, and is more efficient in manufacturing. However, technologies also have their shortcomings such as being dependent on gadgets, addiction to technology, social iso isolation of people, and it also affects people's jobs. That is why we believe that the painting is effective in illustrating the truth and reality that people face in today's generation. The famous painting of Cesar Legaspi's, Legaspi titled Gadgets is effective since you can see the different elements of art were all emphasized and the principle of designs were followed. As we continuously look at the painting, we can depict that the artist is skillful enough to portray his thoughts. With the help of the elements and his own unique techniques, he finished his artwork that effectively states his perception about how gadgets, technologies, and machines will affect people and society. Its overall aspects and the way the artist conveys its message are surely seen in his artwork. By knowing the artist's background, the description, analysis, and interpretation of the artwork, we came up with that we came up with judgment. Being knowledgeable about this aspect and using this as a criteria help us to understand the message of the artist and the artwork's importance. Now, here are Ms. Judea and Ms. Regina to tackle more about architectural arts. Thank you, Mr. Cavado. The person behind the magnificent work of Hanab Talas is architect Francisco Bobby Manosa. He is known for always incorporating his design into Filipino culture. The house includes chemically treated coconut products such as lumber, roots, dung, bark, fruit, flower, and shell. The coconut palace is shaped like an octagon and its roof is designed like a Filipino hat. 
Coconut Palace had a controversial history. It was built for over 14 month period requested by Imelda Marcos for Pope John Paul II when he visited the Philippines back in 1981. However, the Pope declined the offer because of the poverty of the country during that time and staying in a house with almost 10 million US dollars spent would be too extravagant. We can find the Coconut Palace in the CCP complex in Pasay City. At least 70% of the whole structure is made from coconut. Coconut tongs were used for the columns and coconut wood shingles for the roof. On the ground floor of the Coconut Palace, there is an ornately designed 24-seat table with 40,000 40, tiny pieces of Indian coconut shells. There is also a dining room that the Marcos family used as a study area. Each of the seven suits on the second floor was named in different provinces in the Philippines. There is a Zabuanga room where George Hamilton stayed during his visit. Pampanga room where its bed sheet is made of pussy fiber or fiber from the banana tree. Marawi room represents the culture of Muslims in Mindanao. It involves the color purple and green which are their official color. Biko room which faces the Manila Bay and it is also con considered as Imelda's favorite room. Mountain Province Room, a picturesque historical treasure room filled with the traditional Ifugao tribal artifacts. Iloilo Room, where Brooke Shield stayed during her visit, and this room also showcases Iloilo's best handicrafts. Last is the Pangasinan Room, which has a remarkable bedspread made of pineapple fibers. Celebrating coconut as the tree of life, the Coconut Palace is considered by many as one of the most striking structures for its interior and architecture. The Coconut Palace shows the versatility of the coconut and its viability as an export. The whole structure also shows the culture of the Philippines. The whole palace is made out of coconut which is called the tree of life as each part of this tree can be used into something creative and can benefit us. Did you all know that the Philippines is also the world's second largest coconut producer right behind Indonesia? One third of our land is devoted to coconut farming. Our farmers produce enough to hold a whopping 45% share in world coconut exports. Philippine architecture is more likely to be described as something that has lots of western imitations and influences. Having an infrastructure that features a very Filipino vibe can be influential in the industry as it highlights and becomes the voice of uniquely Filipino designs. A lot of Filipino things are found inside the Coconut Palace such as mural mosaic, the Philippine jade and black stone, an anahong motif in the mural along with the ceiling in the living room, inlays of coconut shells running across the end of the room and seven suits on the second floor which feature the seven provinces from the Philippines and each room consists of the province's unique ornaments and culture. The Coconut Palace is like what we see in the usual home of a Filipino which is Bahay Kubo. It is a large house that combines a lot of native materials and shows the history, culture, and local products of our country. The palace features very Filipino and provincial ornamental which give the house a harmonious and hospitality vibe. With Bobby Manoza's work, he combines indigenous materials with technological processes. With this, we can see the Philippine vernacular architecture in the modern structures that reveal the Filipino virtues. The three main principles of design that we can notice in the work of Bobby Manoza's Coconut Palace is first its emphasis. From the name of the work itself, Coconut Palace, we can already notice what's the main subject and material used in the structure, which is the coconut. It is the main piece that attracts the audience to go there. Next is balance. As we can see in the work of Bobby Manoza, a lot is going on inside by mixing all classifications of visual weights, color, texture, and objects, but he managed to make it balance and have a sense of stability and evenly disperse. Every element or object placed in his work has a certain amount of weight added to the structure, may it be color, size, and texture. But in Bobby Manoza's work, he managed to let it have its composition so that the audience's eyes will still be pleased with his work.
last is unity. Aside from balancing the elements in an architectural design, unity is accomplished through the consistent use of lines, color, material, and texture. This means that the distinctive de design used in the architecture goes well with each other and makes the whole structure stand out. To, per to discuss further our art analysis and interpretation about the Coconut Palace, we will now mainly focus on interpretation and judgment by answering the six questions in one answer only. For starters, we all know that Mr. Francisco Mañosa is one of the national artists and a modernist architect here in the country. Most of his works focus on creating innovative designs but main maintaining their structure in the Filipino style like using different domestic or local materials found in our country. In his work, Coconut Palace, he was highlighting the use of coconut, one of the things we are proud of, and the techniques he was using. Despite implementing innovative designs to the buildings, he kept the things that Filipinos are known of. Furthermore, you can see once you visit the infrastructure, you can see his reference to using the traditional method where he used different ventanilla or ventilation seats with a sliding panel. Using ventanilla is known for the different houses created in the Philippines. This helped with adaptation of the building to different climates or weathers. This was according to an article published by Ogura from Japan. They were working on the different house structures and well-known establishments in the country. As a first impression, we always thought about the regime of Marcos since the former first lady wished this mansion to be built for the different international artists coming to the country, but it is for the Pope coming to Manila. However, the Pope decided to choose a much simpler house to stay in. Going back, when we see this place, you can see how the architect embraced the modern, te modern techniques or ways of creating infrastructure but still included designs from Filipino designs or art styles because of incorporating the traditional de design from references and the design he wants to build like the like with the roof that has resemblance from an ipahat or a bahay kubo. Most of the furniture and the ceiling are created from coconut, different workshops of coconut, and there are approximately 80% of coconut in the said building. Despite Manyosa being a modernist architect, he still managed to create a piece like this. More than that, Manyosa, also Luxin, were contemporary artists because according to Agura, both artists pointed out these three main points with their works. Number one is construction technology, number two is economic background, and number three is social needs because it is where most architects lack of or unable to achieve. Not only that, but they also quoted, they have pursued modern Filipino style and have contributed to the establishment of this style. Although these architects have their own characteristic designs, they share, the co they share the quest for the Filipino style, sharing the essential of the style with other architects beyond region or generation. Who are concerned with their own cultural identity is important to understand the activities of these two architects. Personally, if, we're to, if we were to judge, we like the Coconut Palace at, as it was built with the incorporation of modernin, mo, modernism and historical ref, reference in the structure. Francisco Mañosa was known during Marcos' regime because of being one of the architects who built for the former first lady, Imelda Marcos. If we were, if we were personal, personally visit the palace, we would be in awe because of the structure and how it was built. More than that, this is one of the infrastructure that helped Francisco Mañosa to be to be known not only in the Philippines but in other countries as well. Therefore, we think that this that this building is effective because it is one of the Filipino architects' references in creating a building, a house, or even a palace. We could say it otherwise if most architects have been studying and choosing to carry on other styles rather than the Filipino designs in the present day because of a huge battle between choosing modernism and the traditional ways here in the country due to globalization. Nowadays, it is hard to see a piece that has a Filipino touch, but seeing this, co this, co this coconut palace, the answer has been, already, has been given already. With this piece, and if they study it carefully, this could help our country innovate and known for creating our own ways. According to Agora, 
Dick once quoted, The works of these two architects have always clearly reflected the modern condition while demonstrating the ability to overcome problems to creative endeavor resulting in cultural adaptation. This effort clearly show, that shows the synthesis of insight into each condition and the necessity of design. To discuss the next, art, next artist, let me call on Mr. Christian Alvarez for the, for the description of Magpupukot. Going back to visual arts, the next artwork presented is called Magpupukot. The word Magpupukot means pulling in the net. The artist behind the magnificent artwork is the national artist Carlos Botong B. Francisco. He is a national artist awarded four years after his death in 1973. Carlos Francisco was best known for his massive murals that depict historical pieces. Magpupukot was made way back in 1957 as a commissioned mural in Bulwagang Katipunan of Manila City Hall. The painting was made with the use of oil canvas. Warm tones are used in the drawing, giving it a pleasing saturation. His visual enactment honors his culture's or creative origins, and his photographs are inspired by the Filipino people's zealous commitment and vibrant colors. For the analysis, let me call on Mr. Renz Owen. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. In terms of the analysis of the artwork, the subject matter focus in landscape design, depicting the process or way of fishermen in catching a fish by pulling the net. The theme depicts the lives of the fishing community in his hometown in Angono Rizal. The artwork shows a traditional way of fishing, determination, strength, perseverance, and unity of every fisherman which led to his inspiration to commemorate their lives and experience. The specific elements that stand out are the formation of three boats that are arranged for the specific purpose and aligned in the process way of fishing. The first boat located in front consists of seven men who help each other in pulling the net. The second boat located on the left consists of a woman who is observing and a man fixing their sail. The third boat located on the upper side consists of six men who row the boat with their oars to balance their fishing from the sea current. Interestingly, there is also a person located on the right side who submerges his body in water that tends to observe escape fishes in the net. Another element that stands out is there is only one woman in the artwork. The woman is sitting with her hand on her leg and observing what does the man doing. This implies dominance of men toward women which symbolize patriarchal system. The artist wants to convey equal rights and tends to break stereotyping. Lastly, the artwork also shows Filipino primitive value of clothing in fishing, the use of sombrero, ordinary shirt, and bandana in their necks with variety of colors identify historical fishermen. Materials and equipment used are back in 1960s where it used oars and physical strength to hook up various fishes, rather than today that we are using automatic boats and involuntary machines. These elements of art interact with each other by producing balance, aesthetics, and meaningful texture in everything we see in this artwork. The elements reflect the abundance of our water resources, brave fishermen, and wide maritime territories at that time. If we dig into its deeper meaning, some elements stand out about the issues presented such as the stereotyping, awareness of fishing community, and the recognition of the fishermen's worth and contribution to our economy. If you look at the entirety of elements, the main colors use focus in brown, aquatic green, and yellow that correspond typically, typically to the fisherman nature and identity. The curved lines are used to define the flow of human figures, the sea current, and the materials. Elements shared in harmony by representing the body shape of structure, use of maximum space and historical background that create a positive mood and meaning. The principles of design are almost present in the artwork. The viewer's attention is driven by the artist about the fisherman way of living as his emphasis. It applies balance as the process of fishing is aligned into a purpose and colors are overlaid from lightness and darkness due to their shadows and primary light. There is a repetition of shapes and figures, especially the fishermen who are pulling the net and the fishermen who are rowing the boat, as they create maximum space according to their movement. The distribution of movement rotates in a clockwise manner in order to balance their way of fishing. The use of folk colors flowing in the decorative patterns make it more alive and attract the whole value of the artwork. 
the artist always used unified representation in the life of every Filipino livelihood and communal experiences. Now, let's proceed to the interpretation to be led by Mr. Alvarez. Thank you, Mr. Renz. In terms of the interpretation of the artwork, Carlos Francisco was inspired by, by his own hometown of Angona Rizal, where a fishing village was located near their home. Botong's favorite subject was to paint the lives of the fishery sector. The Filipino people's deeply held values and the rituals have become a medium for him, allowing him to use his unique style to create new imagery. This fascination with history piqued his interest in learning more about the Filipino past, which provide him with useful information. Seeing the artwork firsthand implies that the people in the painting are fishing, but it is not too evident because their attire is not what we usually see in the fishermen nowadays. And their boats are too small to carry a load of fish back to the shore. Based on the color of the skin of the fishermen in the painting, they are Filipinos because of the vibrant Kayumangi color of their skin. The size of their boat is too small for a fishing vessel, so the boat might be some kind of kayak boat, but the design is way back in the past since it doesn't resemble a kayak boat in the present. If we dig deeper into the painting, we can see that there are three boats, but let us focus on the first boat and the third one. In the first boat, the fishermen only wear pants, but on, but on the third boat, they are wearing shirts and pants. We can say that the fishermen are, na, are not in the same class as each other. The fishermen on the first boat looks like they are working much harder than the rest of the people in other boats. Being that said, they are what we call the, lo the lower class in society, seeing how they must work the hardest than the other class but do not get the same treatment as them. And lastly, for the judgment, let me once again call on Mr. Renz Owen. Thank you, Mr. Alvarez. In terms of our judgment, we amazingly like the artwork. Aside of being one of the greatest artworks of Mr. Francisco, the value of portraying this art signifies the fisherman's noble job, lifestyle, identity, story, and its history. If we look at the artwork, the entire canvas is filled with essential elements and detailed ideas, creating a wide range of interpretation. The warm tones, positive mood, and vibrant colors and principle of design are in equal manner. We like how Mr. Francisco imitate and give honor every fisherman not only in his hometown but also every Filipino fishing community across our archipelago. It unfolds different issues that need to be addressed, real life situations and their important contribution in our household necessities, agriculture and economy. Through this artwork, he also not only express Philippine nationhood but also the usage of mural paintings that seems to become a forgotten art nowadays. This artwork is effective in a way it hit us Filipino to see the true life of every fisherman. The artwork is not just painted for pleasurable reasons but due to its intended purpose. It reflects traditional methods of fishing that somehow we haven't practiced today due to the evolution of technological advancement. This artwork brings us to the ancient time where we consider used barely materials and mainly use of physical strength. Even though this art has been painted for many years, the expression and symbolic attributes remain to create awareness and impact because all of we have now today came from the product and step back from what we have before. Through this background of Mr. Carlos Botong Francisco, we have arrived at this criteria and judgment. We review all the things that possibly inspired him to create the Mapupukot artwork. We clearly see that his hometown in Hongono Rizal is a fishing village and this artwork is also close to his personal influence. We conclude that he probably paints it with the use of mural as fishermen have been unrecognized in his time. Somehow, it can also imply the nature of Angono in rich cultural fishing community. That's why he paints it. Another strong criteria that also helps us is the common denominator of all of his artworks through his style of painting. From the elements, medium, and materials, he all always implies Filipino lifestyle, customs, traditions, mythologies, and the importance of looking back in our historical pieces. He also uses murals with post-impressionist art for effective engagement and use of space.
as our presentation has ended. Thank you for listening to our art analysis and interpretation for the different Filipino artists' artworks in the field of literature, visual arts, and architecture. And lastly, we are the connoisseurs of group number two.